Okay, in the last video, we talked about how we could um, start off with a function and we could find the x-intercepts or the zeros. And then also, you know, going backwards, we could be given x-intercepts or zeros and then from that find the function. Now, if you'll remember, we talked about this uh, where we said, okay, if I have x-intercepts at 1 and at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5, then my graph, because this it has a positive A value, I know it's going to be opening up, so it's going to do something like this. I'm not sure exactly how low down this goes, but I do know that it's going to um, give me a, a picture that looks something like that. Let's graph it on our calculator just to double check so that we can see exactly what that does look like. So in the calculator, in the y equals, I'm going to put in x squared, and then um, our function was plus 4x and then minus 5. And then I'm going to zoom 6 so we can see that. So that's exactly what we expected it to look like. We had x-intercept at negative 5 and at positive 1 and the graph opened up. Okay, let's look at another one and just see what's going on here. Here we have another one that says x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So again, you know, this was a f of x or a y value. We've replaced it with 0 so that we can find the solution, which is the same thing as finding the x-intercept or the 0. Again, because this is quadratic, we should be thinking about factoring. So if I factor this, let's see, x squared will factor into x times x. Uh, 4 would have to be 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. So 2 and 2 would come together in the middle to give us the 4x if they were both positive. Now taking each factor and setting it equal to 0, we have x plus 2 equals 0 and x plus 2 equals 0. And now solving each one, we get x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 2. These are the exact same thing. So if I were looking at a graph, um, oops, that's not very pretty, but that's okay. That is only crossing the x-axis here at negative 2. Because the a value is positive, it has to open up. Well, it cannot cross through here and then come back up or we would have another x-intercept. So this one is very strange. Let's graph this function and see what it actually looks like. So in my calculator, I'm going to go back to the y equals and I'm going to clear this one out and I'm going to graph x squared plus 4x plus 4 and we're just going to see what that one looks like. Again, it does show what we expected it to for the x-intercepts, but notice how it comes down and it touches and it goes right back up again. It has to do that. It could not cross through, otherwise it would have to cross back through again somewhere. And we didn't have another x-intercept in our equation. So that's very interesting. Um, let me go ahead and just do a little picture of that. A little, not a great picture, but just a little one. Okay, how many times a zero or an x-intercept appears is called its multiplicity. And you can help remember that. By, there was a Michael Keaton movie once that was called Multiplicity where he made multiple copies of himself. So that'll help you kind of remember that. We can tell by the multiplicity whether the graph is crossing the x-axis or just touching it and going back up. If we have a zero of even multiplicity, then that means it touches. If we have a zero of odd multiplicity, it crosses. Now back up here where we had um, x equals 1 and x equals negative 5, those both only happened one time. That's an odd multiplicity. They only happened one time, so the graph crossed there. In our second uh, example, we had x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 2. That negative 2 happened twice. That's an even multiplicity, so the graph touches there.